and this is the Sunday. <laughs> Wow, that just My peaked. God, are you all right? I wonder how this could have happened. <laughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Hmm. Those stones weigh tons. We won't move them. It does not matter. If our investigation requires it, we shall ask for them to be removed. Uh, higher. This is gonna sound bad, but uh, just just pull over some uh, Mexicans from the uh, colonies and eh, from the former colonies, I guess, and they'll have them cleared within you know 20, 40 minutes, depending if we give lime and modelos. For well, the Mexican is a hard-working um, man of many talents. <laughs> jogging, jogging, jogging. Through the doors to the brazier. Nye. 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 Come on. Come on. <laughs> I should analyze this melted metal. Yes. I don't want to. I feel ill. I want to go. I can't understand what happened. Uh, am I allowed to leave? I guess we should tell Lestrade that we should let these men get um, dressed. Lestrade. Any progress, Mr. Holmes? Damn. Um. Arrival. Sir Ronnie's arrival saved the archaeological research at the baths. A bottle of champagne and an ice bucket was found inside the changing room. We don't know. We don't yet know who brought it. Huh. No deductions. We should go to Bega Street. Who's a good doggy? On the sofa for the third time today. Well, don't be surprised if Watson sits on you again. You really ought to look for the dog before you sit down. What should we do next, Holmes? I'm going to examine some shit. Th like this dirt. Dirt sample. Oh ho. Um. Focus up, down, boy. There we go. Selenite. Pyrite, otherwise known as fool's gold. Or pyrite, because it looks nothing like gold. White clay particles. Interesting. According to the color and its composition, I deduce that this sample is white clay. Now, I need to find which area near London this sample belongs to. Well, wow, would you look at that? The sample of dirt belongs to the White London Clay region, located near the city of St. Albans. How about the blood? Let us analyze this blood sample. This blood has not coagulated well. It seems very liquid. That is strange. Let us see what is inside it. it Hydrogen was... peroxide will bring any foreign matter to the surface. It was thinned down. Take a pipette. Peroxide. Water. This blood is heavily diluted with water. It was in a steam house. This is a piece of metal taken from a brazier. It appears to be silver, but 
I need to be sure. If it is silver, it will be possible to melt it, since silver's melting point is at around 900 degrees Celsius. Let us compare this sample with a silver penny by testing it with acid. If it changes color to match the result of reaction with a silver coin, then it is silver. I must take a pipette and place several drops of acid upon the samples. Yes, yes, yes. yes. First the coin, and now, aha, the reaction is the silver. same red stain. It is silver, Britannia silver quality. My analysis table, it is useful for my work. Mm. I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Remarkable find, perforated metal plates, melted silver, morning telegram, chilled champagne, and a bloody key. Yes, yes. Back to the baths. Or Bentcliffe. Uh, 1893 was a remarkable year for my work in Egypt. Uh, research. Uh... Ni 1893. Uh, East Africa. Bentcliffe's mummy! The great excavation in Asunun has taken over three years. Sir Rodney Bentcliffe directed the archaeological work. A mummy was found with an inoculated eye and posed in an unusual position. The right hand was tense, as if reaching out for something or to someone. The mummy was buried upright. She has been named the Desperate Mummy due to her very peculiar characteristics. Nearby can be read in Latin, By the eye, he was punished, for he saw what he was not worthy. The mummy is believed to be Roman rather than Egyptian, as some symbols found in the tomb are in common with the Mil Mithraic? 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 Mithric? No. Hold on. Hold on. Two seconds while I do this bit. Myth. Raic. Mithraic. Yes, that. Mithraic. Here it is. By the eye he was punished, for he saw that he was not worthy. Dreadful. Quite. Uh, My archive. Mm. I can always consult with it, if needed. A map of London... Two baths, Watson. Mm. Do I have any deductions? Inside the brazier, Britannia silver was found melted in the brazier. Sir Rodney's arrival saved the archaeological research at the baths. The blood around the victim was highly diluted with water. Huh. Very, very little. Let's see if they let these men get dressed yet. No? Interesting. Gentlemen. Do we have to stay here? Can't we go? Jesus. I'm in shock. I don't want to talk. It's horrible. So Rodney East, dead. Can't we speak about it somewhere else? Oh, glasses. How did I miss these? Ah, shattered glasses, or at least fractured. One lens is cracked. 
probably due to the temperature of the brazier. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short-sighted. Mr. Holmes? What am I missing? What am I missing here? Ah, who are you? Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objections? No. None, Lestrade. I literally can't. Oh, it was Watson standing right there. I literally can't think of anything else here. I have to examine the belongings, and that will be at Scotland Yard. Good day to you, Mr. Holmes. Good day to you, Mr. Policeman. All right, uh, Pitkin. An embroidered silk handkerchief. A fountain pen with solid gold trim. Ah. Sir Gregory Pitkin, manager, Rowan Bath. Sir Gregory Pitkin's visiting card. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, really, I clear my throat. Garros, the bloody towel. When Garro found Sir Rodney dead, he wiped the blood upon himself. A drug vial. A phial with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wort flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. Mm, sounds fun. Blink horns. An ordinary pencil. A letter from uh, Sir Gregory Pitkin's letter. Sir Gregory Pitkin, manager to Mr. Blinkhorn. Dear Sir. The interests that I represent require the situation at the baths to be changed for the better. At the present time, the Frigidarium excavations remain under your direction, and yet the works have not progressed. You have failed to find anything of value, and we are unable to make the Frigidarium accessible to the public. The Frigidarium is a valuable asset in the recreation of the Roman bath experience. I urge you to complete your work within the next two months. You have this remaining time to conclude your archaeological research and to find yourself another workplace. Ah, oh, he was being sh he was being sacked. Bentcliffs. This ring. ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. Mm -hmm. An Egyptian symbol. It is a very old jewel. Mm been resized. I see the join. This ring was repaired, and quite badly, too, with silver. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? Oh. A very pertinent question. Interesting. A silver penny? No. An Egyptian penny. An old and rather dirty coin. Roman penny? A hand-drawn map. Ah, his notebook. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. A ripped page. The last pages were torn out. We must find a way of retrieving Sir Rodney's last lines. Watson, please prevent anyone from entering the room. But first, fetch me a pencil. To begin with, a few strokes of the pencil will be enough. I don't want to damage the traces. Oh. 
and then to gently smudge the leftover pencil marks with a handkerchief. I'm sure that Watson won't mind if I use his. What a dick. Mr. Holmes, the coroner had... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. Well... Plus, you're a constable. You're not Lestrade. Uh, a s report from coroner. Subject Sir Rodney Bentcliffe, age 63. The right eyeball has been burst, pierced to the hilt by a curved-bladed knife. The blade cut through the orbit of the frontal bone, ripping a part of the frontal lobe and the corpus callosum, um, after which completing its trajectory into the cerebellum caused hemorrhagic lesions. All of these injuries led directly to the death of the individual. At the upper lobe of the right lung, there is an old injury filled with an amount of mucus and ciliated debris that may be corresponded to a chronic infection by elements likely inhaled in a burial chamber, a decaying mummy, for example, or a dried and decomposing food product intended to accompany the deceased in their grave. The remainder of the body does not appear to have been damaged. Hmm. Locked. Damn. To the body? I want as much information as I can get before talking to our suspects. Ah, the body. Yes. An unusual wound. Inflicted by a curved knife which resulted in instant death, as the coroner's report says. Mm -hmm. According to the coroner, there were no cardiac problems nor lung congestion, but there were traces of fungus, possibly contracted from the Egyptian tombs. Mm. The coroner observed no stomach nor liver disease, if we're to accept that Sir Rodney was an occasional drinker and 63 years of age. Yes, yes. Let's rotate the body. Oh my god. Some light bruising caused by a rope. What the hell? The bruising is in lines. They were caused by a rope around the waist. Sir Rodney was descending somewhere. Okay, so a strange wound, very liquid blood, effective arrival, stolen notes. The wound was made with a peculiarly curved and sharp weapon. According to Sir Rodney's notes, he was about to make a remarkable discovery. I don't know. I'd just be stabbing in the dark if I were to try and deduce anything now. 